I want to show a quick demo here of how we can use the standard Java libraries to parse XML files. So here is a, an XML file that I grabbed off the internet. This is from uh, NPR's RSS feed. Um, and so I'm going to write some learning tests to make sure that I know how to pull some data out of here using a standard Java DOM parser. So I'm going to go over to my test folder. I'm going to make a new class. We'll call it uh, Java XML Parsing Parser Test. Um, we'll get rid of this cruft and, and get right in here. There's test. Maybe the first thing we want to make sure we can do to stick, stay kind of modest is just uh, grab the first thing, the first element here, RSS element out of here. So uh, let's try that. We can say test um, read RSS element. Uh, there's a couple of steps you have to go through to create the parser. Um, it looks like this. We make a document builder factory. There's a new, I'm sorry, uh, document builder factory dot new instance. Here we go. So this is a good example here of a static factory method. Uh, oftentimes we try to avoid static methods because they're showing a procedural design instead of an object-oriented design. But this particular idiom is, is actually a best practice. So the static factory method is responsible for creating an instance of this class, which we can see we're, we're assigning here. Um, and that's good because the static factory method actually has a name as opposed to uh, if we use a constructor and we just say new whatever. Um, so that's one of the reasons why static factory methods are nice. Um, and once you know that that's an idiom, you can go read more about static factory methods and how they're used. Um, for now, let's move on. So we make a document builder out of the factory. And then the builder, we will parse an input stream. So what's our input stream? Uh, I have my demo.xml file in a directory that's marked as a test resources root. So I can use this trick. I can say input stream. Oops, that's the wrong input stream. Input stream from java.io. And this will be git class, git class loader, git resources stream demo.xml. And that should pull in that file as a stream. So that's the stream I will parse here. And what does it give me back? Uh, I'll use control Q to bring up the Java docs. It gives us back a document. So document, document, there we go. Uh, Alt enter to import that. Great. Now these are complaining because they can throw some exceptions. Because I'm in a unit test, I will simply make these uh, throw the exception in their declaration here, because if the test fails, that means that I did something wrong in my code. Uh, I am following the first principle where my code, uh, my tests are isolated. So I'm not going to be touching the network, for example. So it's not the case that an IO exception would represent the network going down. Um, so I'm fine with just throwing these up here. All right, so once we have the document, we can do stuff with it. So what are we trying to do here? We'll just try to um, get the uh, the first element out of there. So we can say document dot get child nodes. Now that will give us a node list. See that here? Like that. Alt enter to import it. And the first of those children should be this element. Right, so in uh, DOM, the document object model, there's all kinds of nodes. Uh, elements are the ones we usually care about. That's like like this one here, this one here, this one here. All right, so let's actually turn that into an element. We'll say uh, children dot, oops, spell it correctly. Children item zero is going to be the RSS element. I hope it is anyway. Um, we need to manually cast that into element uh, because this item only returns a, a node element is a subtype of node. Again, you can check the API docs for details. Um, all right, so from here I can say RSS element get node name and I can say assert, assert that that's equal to RSS. All right, always expected and then actual. Oh, it looks like I accidentally pulled in the wrong assert. We can see that up here. Uh, there's a junit.framework assert. That's not what we want. We want um, org.junit. There it is. Good. Okay, so this should open up that stream, uh, create a parser, parse that input stream into a document, 
and then we'll uh, look at the top level of the document and see if the first element is called RSS. Uh, let's run it. Yeah, great. Um, so, uh, red, green, refactor, right? I should probably get in here and refactor a little bit. And you can see I've used white space to try to separate some of these pieces. Um, this is all really initialization, um, which I know I'm going to need for my next test. So I'll just pull that out into a, a before method. Let's see, so now it's actually this one that's going to throw these exceptions. And I'm going to make sure we can get a hold of that document here. Oops. So remember, the, uh, the before annotation makes it so that before every single test case, uh, this code will be executed. So make sure every test runs separately um, and isolated from each other, in fact. Uh, I don't think we need these anymore. Okay, good. So let's check to make sure our, our refactoring didn't break anything. Oh, we're okay. Good. Um, let's write another test. So if we can get that element out, let's do something closer to what we really want here. Let's go in and pull up uh, one of these items and check to make sure that its title matches. So how's that going to work? Test read first news item title. Okay, so our before method is going to load the document. So we can, um, one option would be to uh, repeatedly use this get child nodes method. So we could get the child nodes of RSS and then get the child nodes of channel and, and kind of work our way through there. That's really tedious though. There's a really convenient method called um, get elements by tag name. There it is. So I'm going to say, I want all the elements that have the name item. Right, if I look through my sample data, item is, is, uh, is holding all of these interesting news items. And uh, critically, it doesn't have a nested element also called item. Right? This is the only thing called item. So if I say give me all the items, that should give me these elements. Okay, um, And that's going to give me back a node list also. So the first item will be the first one in that list, right? If I say items dot item zero, casting that into an element. So that should give me this element. Now let's look for its title. So we can say uh, first item dot get element by tag name title. And again, that's going to give me a node list. Uh, now, in fact, that should give me exactly one title. Um, I could write a test for that, in fact, but let me just go right in and try to check the content. Uh, here's what I want it to be. So I can say element with title, uh, let's just call it title, is going to be element titles dot item zero. That'll be the first one from there. It should be the only one from there. Assert dot assert equals expected value as a string literal, actual value, title dot get text content. There. So check to make sure that if we do this kind of uh, series of, of incantations, we will get the data that we want. Sure enough, that worked great. Um, so using this approach, we can see how many uh, items there are. We can get the individual titles. Uh, I'll point out that I asked for the titles that were within this first item. Uh, that was on purpose, because I know from playing with RSS in the past, there's another title up here. So if I just said to the document, give me all the titles, that'll give me this one, and this one, and these ones, right? And, and that's not at all what I want. I only want the titles out of the items. Uh, so. Once you know how to do this, that allows you to move forward with something like a, a real RSS parser that will take a stream of data, build a document, and then generate your domain model objects around that. So you can turn this data into something that you can manipulate and then send up to your user interface layer. I hope that was helpful.